This video will show you how to set up and use your 10 high CO2 laser. Your laser will arrive in a crate. Use a pair of side cutters or a razor to remove the straps. Use a mallet and a flathead screwdriver to pry the top open all the way around. Use a pry bar if necessary. Now it's time to remove the side panel. After the side panel is removed, you can slide the laser out the end of the box. Don't forget to remove the honeycomb cutting bed out of the bottom of the crate. Now it's time to remove the shrink wrap. Inside the laser machine, you will find your ventilation duct, air pump, water pump, and a bag that includes a hose clamp, USB cable, power cable, and USB licensing sentinel, as well as some tape. Remove the strap tying down the carriage for shipping. Use a 7mm socket and wrench to remove the orange tinted viewing window and remove paper from backing. Place viewing window back using a wrench. Do not over tighten as you will crack the plastic. Now let's take a look at the back of the unit. You have your US power your European and Asian power, as well as a ground wire. You will not need the ground wire if you're using a 110 volt US connection. You also have your exhaust outlet, your water inlet, and a water outlet tube. The black hose is for your air inlet. The air will keep pieces from flaming up when you're etching. Now let's work on the exhaust system. Install your hose and your hose clamp on the back of the unit. Securely tighten with screwdriver. You can extend your hose out a window or through any proper exhaust port. Use at least a three gallon, five gallon preferred bucket and distilled water to pump through your laser tube for cooling. Remove your cooling pump. Install hose bib. And install the four rubber feet on the bottom of the pump so it will securely fasten to the bottom of your cooling bucket. Drill three holes in the top of your lid, one for your power and two for your inlet and outlet water supply in return. Make sure that your inlet hose goes to the output of your water pump. Now let's hook up your air pump. The air will come out the hot end of your laser. This will keep pieces from flaming up and smoke from staining your items. Inside the 110 volt input is a fuse and a spare. If for some reason your unit does not power on, check this fuse. Let's open up the back and take a look. Here we have the anode input side, flow sensor, and a temperature sensor mounted on the hose. This is your negative ground end. Here you see the first reflection mirror and an easy access panel to clean debris. Your water temperature sensor is located in the rear. Do not let your water get above 24 degrees Celsius. Your final reflective mirror is here, and this is a red dot adjustable laser for aiming. Now it's time to install the honeycomb laser cutting bed. 
This is your first adjustable reflective mirror. This is your second adjustable reflective mirror and your final reflecting adjustable mirror. This is a USB Sentinel. It will be required to run the laser software. Plug the laser cable into your USB port and plug the other end into the laser engraver. Make sure that your emergency stop button is released and you can turn on the power. The knob located on the inside of the laser will allow the cutting area to rise and lower for a precise focal point. The button turns off and on the interior light. Now let's take a look at the software installation. Before we begin, we want to disable any antivirus or malware software that could interfere with the script files for the installation. The software provided includes LaserDraw, which can be used to etch and cut. The preferred method for etching and cutting is Corel Draw. Please be sure to read the install required document. Although Corel Draw is not included, Corel Laser is, which is a plugin which can be used inside Corel Draw 12 on Windows 7 or Corel X8 in Windows 10. Now, let's install Laser Draw. Select a language, click Next, select your directory, install, and you're done. Although Corel Draw is not included with your laser, I'm going to walk you through the setup and install as it is the most commonly used platform. You will need a serial number to complete this installation. Select a language. Make sure you install all the included packages as they are all very useful when it comes to laser cutting and engraving. You can choose to register Corel Draw now or later. Select OK. Finished. Now we're going to install Corel Laser. Corel Laser is a plugin that works inside Corel Draw. This plugin allows you to communicate with your laser engraver. Set parameters, speed, and other variables. Click Finished. Now, when you click on Corel Laser, it will actually launch Corel Draw. And you will notice in the top right hand corner, you have tools for engraving. Let's go ahead and set up the parameters for the template. This way, every time you open up Corel Draw, it's set. Go to Page, Size, and we're going to set it to correspond to the size of our laser engraver, which happens to be 400 by 300 millimeters. I want to save this custom page. And we want to make sure that this document opens this way every time. Click this, OK. And that's the size of our cutting area, so we know how much room we have to work with. You can see the laser is online and complete. By clicking the setup, you can come in and click the main board. We're using an M2. Speed ratio needs to be between 90 and 100 percent. Resolution is 1000. Max speed is 500 millimeters a second. Origin is 1. Page size is 400 by 300. And here you can see the device ID, proving that the laser mainboard is connected to the computer. Select the priority you wish to have. You can also set the distance of the X and Y rail. Now, before we turn on the laser, we want to make sure water is flowing. Turn on your cooling pump, as well as your air pump. We want to make sure that all of the air bubbles escape the glass tube before ever test firing. Turn on the laser. Press the test button. Your tube should light up. On the outlet end, Place a piece of paper, mark a circle, and make sure your laser is striking directly in the center of this hole. Move on to the next reflective mirror. Do the same thing. 
If it's not striking in the middle, go back to the previous mirror and make adjustments with the thumb screws until it strikes in the middle. Move on to the final mirror and repeat. If it doesn't work here, go back to the last mirror and make adjustments to the thumb screws until it strikes in the middle. The laser should now be out the end of the nozzle. If it doesn't, adjust the last mirrors. Laser intensity can be adjusted for different materials by 10%, 1%, or 0.1%. Another important factor is your focal length. You need to use the provided orange quarter inch square to make sure that your nozzle is exactly one quarter inch away from whatever you're etching or cutting. Lower or raise the bed to adjust. Now let's try cutting something. Let's start with a square. You can set it to a one by one inch square. Moving this square around the template does not represent where it will cut on the cutting bed. Clicking on the Corel laser cut button and moving it within this grid will. As you can see, moving the square in the grid will move the laser head. I can select a cutting speed, or I can type in a value and see that the laser head will move to that parameter. Now, let's get started. Press the starting button. As you can see, the laser cut a clean square. If your edges look slanted, make sure your focal length is correct. Now, I'll show you how to import an image and edge it. Click the import button, select your file, and you can resize by value or by dragging by hand. Click the Edge button, move to your desired location, make sure that you have your speed set to what you like. We're going to go ahead and go for maximum speed on this one, 500 millimeters a second. You also have the option to repeat this action or change your pixel size. This is your resolution. Does it move two lines or one line every time it cuts? Now let's get started. You are viewing the etching at 8 times speed. All done. Now I could cut this piece out as well, but this is just a demo. I'm going to quickly demonstrate how to use laser draw. It's pretty simple and similar to Corel Draw, but doesn't have as many features. We can set the size of the template. In our case, it's 400 by 300 millimeters. You can also zoom in or out on your workspace using the magnifying glass on the toolbar. Let's do the same thing. Let's draw a square and place it where we like. Now the difference between this software and the last software is, as you can see, the square is relative in the space to where it's going to cut on the laser engraver. Now you can move it as well, but it's locked into place relative to the template size. Just press start. I'll also show you how to engrave something. Let's import an image. Click the image, drag it to where you want it. Now I can cut or I can engrave this on whatever I like. Doing the same thing, you go up to the toolbar, click on engraving, and I can actually switch between engraving or cutting. 
You can select your speed, origin, repeat, and resolution here as well. This is the same as the Corel Laser plugin. I hope this video was informative in teaching you how to set up and use your Tenhai CO2 laser. Thanks for watching.